The manufacturing unit cost combined with the retail sales price for your product that you should have determined as part of the product validation phase, this will determine your long-term profitability. The landed manufacturing unit cost is the total cost to manufacture and transport a single unit of your product to your warehouse. If you're successful with your product, you will have a very long, intimate relationship with this number because you're always going to be striving to reduce this cost so you can ultimately make more profit. Most products need to have a suggested retail price about four times the manufacturing cost. Inventory is always one of the biggest costs for hardware companies, and your inventory cost is just your manufacturing unit cost multiplied by the number of units in the order. So in order to estimate your inventory cost, you're gonna to need to first know your manufacturing unit cost. Needless to say, you need to know your landed manufacturing cost as soon as possible. There's no point spending years developing and scaling a product that can't ever be manufactured and sold at a profit. Most entrepreneurs and developers tend to estimate the manufacturing cost after the custom design is completed, but it's much better if you estimate this cost before proceeding to the full custom design. You do not need a completed product design to accurately estimate the manufacturing cost. Okay, let's look at some of the many parts that make up the landed manufacturing cost. For most electronic products, the cost of the various electronic components will be one of the major parts of the manufacturing cost. To estimate the component cost, you only need a very high level block diagram of all the required functions for your product. Then you can price out the cost of each of these functions. The cost of most electronic functions will be dominated by a microchip of some sort. For example, if your product requires an accelerometer, then there will be an accelerometer chip plus a few low-cost passive components that go along with it, such as resistors and capacitors. The same is true for the core processor for your product, which will include the cost of the processor chip or microcontroller chip, plus the cost of the various passive components that go along with that. Once you've selected all the primary components, such as the microchips and sensors, then it's pretty easy to estimate the total cost of that, that individual function. This can all be done without actually designing any of the final schematic circuit diagrams. Now we're going to look at the cost for the printed circuit board production and assembly. For any PCB, you need to first start off producing a blank printed circuit board. And then, a secondary step, all of the electronic components are soldered onto that board. The cost of the blank PCB is mostly determined by its size and the number of routing layers. At a minimum, you'll need two routing layers that are required you have a top and a bottom layer. However, most designs will require four to six layers. More complex designs may require eight layers or more. Increasing the number of layers generally allows you to also reduce the overall size of the printed circuit board. The cost to assemble the PCB, which just for clarification, just assembling a PCB just means soldering down all of the electronic components on the board. And this cost is primarily determined by the total number of components on the board, the minimum spin, pin spacing of those components, the use of any leadless packages, and whether components are soldered on both sides of the printed circuit board. Keep in mind that the cost to produce your assembled PCB in volume will be many times cheaper than the per unit cost of your prototypes because so much of the cost is the initial setup cost. The best way to estimate your PCB cost is to get an online quote from a Chinese PCB manufacturer such as PCBWay.com. The next cost that we're gonna look at is the, the cost for any injection molded plastic parts. The cost you'll pay per unit for any production plastic piece is primarily determined by its weight, its size, the amount of time it takes to mold that part and the type of plastic that's used. The size and weight for each piece really depends on your product design, so there's not really much you can do to control those variables 
short of obviously making your product smaller or perhaps less durable by using thinner plastic for the walls of the enclosure. You can eventually decrease the molding time per unit and thus reduce the part cost by using multiple cavity molds, which allows you to produce multiple copies of the part with a single injection of plastic. Increasing the number of mold cavities is usually the best method for reducing the plastic part cost, but having multiple cavities also significantly increases the upfront mold cost. A website, custompartnet.com, has a really nice tool for helping you estimate the manufacturing cost for a custom injection molded part. The website, chinaplastic.org, I referred to for getting an estimate on the mold cost, also provides estimates on the part cost. Some products are also going to require various other parts, such as stamped metal pieces, springs, gears, screws, motors, etc. Anytime you can use off-the-shelf stock components instead of a custom design part, you essentially eliminate that scaling cost. The next cost that we want to look at for the manufacturing unit cost is the cost for final product assembly. All of your product's individual components will need to be assembled now to form your final product. The cost of this step is almost entirely labor cost. You'll need to come up with an estimate of how many minutes it takes to assemble your product. Then you can just simply multiply that by the labor rate per minute. I typically have used about 50 cents per minute for the US if I'm doing production in the US or about 15 cents per minute for uh, manufacturing in China. Once the final product has been assembled, it needs to be tested to confirm, it, to confirm it's fully functional and that it meets all of the quality specifications. You can test some of the electronics before final assembly to make sure you don't pay to assemble a product that has faulty electronics. Estimating the testing cost per unit is similar to estimating the product assembly cost since it's mostly a function of time and labor cost. No manufacturing process is ever perfect and you're guaranteed to have some faulty units. Initially, this can be as high as 10% or more, but as time goes on and you optimize your manufacturing process, you should be able to reduce this number to only 3% or lower. But you definitely need to make sure that you include scrap rate costs in your, in your estimate for your manufacturing unit cost. Then we have packaging. Packaging costs depend on whether your product will be sold in retail stores or primarily online. Retail packaging is a critical priority if you plan on selling your product in retail stores. So your packaging costs will be significantly higher if that's the case. But if you plan to only sell your product online or perhaps via TV or to industrial customers, then your packaging costs will be a lot less. High-end retail packaging such as full color boxes with custom plastic inserts can be really expensive costing as much as five to $10 each. So in most cases, it's best to start off with a more simple package to minimize your packaging cost. This is one benefit of focusing initially on online sales since the packaging isn't nearly as important as it is for retail sales. Every product will have a small percentage of unhappy customers who return their purchase. I typically estimate a return rate to be similar to the scrap rate so maybe 10% initially, but eventually you get it down to only a couple of percent. Like the scrap rate, your return rate should decrease as you optimize your product, your packaging, and your customer service. Most products are ultimately manufactured in Asia. This means your finished product needs to be trucked from the factory to the local seaport, then it's loaded on a cargo boat and shipped to your target country. Once the cargo ship arrives in your, in your country, then you'll need to truck it from the port to the warehouse or directly to a cu your customer. When shipping via truck, weight primarily determines the cost, but when you're shipping via boat, it's the volume that determines the cost. There are lots of logistics companies out there that will be happy to give you a quote for these various shipping costs. Finally, don't forget the taxes. 
both the country of manufacture and the country of import will charge duties, which need to be included in the final landed cost or final manufacturing unit cost. Although some product categories may be exempt from export and or import taxes. Each product classification has a number known as a harmonized tariff schedule or just HS code. Once you've determined the HS code for your product, then you can look up the export and import duty rates. And the final cost that you need to include in your manufacturing unit cost is profit for the manufacturer themselves. And typically I use 15% for lower volumes and then the 10% profit at the higher production volumes. So those are all the various costs that make up the manufacturing unit cost.